moment as I share this video. Just a moment. So 42. So today's topic is uh, about practicing jazz guitar licks and beginning improvisation. So let me see if I can share this. Just a moment, guys. So I'm just going to share this real quick. So if you guys have any questions on this topic, please feel free to share. I don't know. Guitar students who um, been working on some beginner jazz improvisation with me, and I just want to share some tips, uh, some things I found out, some things I've learned over the years of playing. So if you guys have any questions on the jazz improv side, uh, feel free to ask. And if you guys are watching this, please type out where you're watching so I know where you're watching this from. All that kind of good stuff. Share just one more. Last one. Okay. Hey, David Park. Hey, Danny Rush. Okay, so the story is this. When, when talking about improv, right, I think uh, one of the things that a lot of people discuss is like modes. People talk about modes all the time, like colors, you know, like in terms of major, people talk about Ionian, for example. There's another kind of sound that people use, which is called Lydian. So Lydian is a very popular sound when people discuss modes and stuff. Get sure everything's in frame. So you'll hear stuff like. So these kind of sounds are Lydian sounds. And although I like uh, the whole discussion of modes, and it's something that I go deeply into one of the online courses that I've done last year, I opened up a course called Modes for Guitarists, which was very popular. And I, um, I need to finish working on uh, the recorded version of those because we, I did record a whole bunch of videos for those that were initially it was live. And hopefully at some point this year, I will release the recorded version of it. Um, but besides that, I think as a beginner, one of the best things you can do to develop a uh, jazz technique is actually not necessarily learning about modes first, but just learning about licks, learning nice melodies that you can play uh, on guitar. So for example, if I have a chord, let's say C major 7, I, I want to know the shape. I want to know the, 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 the shape of the chord. I might want to play it this way. And I want to know some nice sounding licks, nice sounding melodies. So for example, uh, this might be nice, you know. So that's a nice little phrase I could do. And then one, one that I learned recently from, I think it was uh, Christian Van Hammett. How, about this, how does it go? That's quite a nice one. So here we... It works better here. That's oh, right. That's right. Yeah. That's a bit long, but there is one part of the line that I like though. That's quite nice, you know. So learning phrases, it, it looks like this. It's just basically the idea of connecting a chord shape 
and finding what sounds good underneath those things. So if I hear this right, you know, I like that line. Or I might do. That's a nice phrase. So I do. Or I might do, for example, another. So that could be nice. a nice lick as well so all these kind of licks that sound good are things that you can learn directly uh, from recordings or from books or from transcribing or from teachers you know anywhere you can find something that sounds good you want to memorize them you want to be able to play them it's not enough to just you know you, you might be able to read them but you don't really want to just read these licks you want to actually internalize them so C major 7 I like you know that's one of the jazz licks I really like a lot. Uh, another one that I like is if I just do, or if I want to make it sound more like, or uh, a more, uh, what's that, what's that style called? Uh, like gypsy jazz, right? So you'll hear that, like a, a D flat, for example. It's a bit weird, but it, it does work. That's quite nice as well, it's quite sweet. Or if I wanted a bluesy one, I might do. Uh, so that's quite nice. So all these different ideas, all these different licks, right? Um, they don't necessarily fit in a mode. They don't necessarily fit as use this arpeggio, use this mode, or use this scale. Uh, they are actually a combination usually of different things. and. So you could have a melody that goes as a major. For example, that might be like a major seven arpeggio. And to here. But then, for example, that's more like a chromatic thing. Or I might do. So that's more Lydian kind. I like that. And there's another one that I really like that I heard from Joe Pass. He did this whole like, you know. So those are all just different melodies, you know. So some of it will not work going to each other, you know. I might do Whatever we play on this chord, we want to relate it to the chord shape. So it has to fit the chord and it has to be something that sounds good. Now, it's, that makes it sound as if it's super simplified. But really, when you want to improvise or you want to learn lines, you want to play stuff that sounds good. That's what it really is. You know, we just want to play stuff that sounds good. And stuff that sounds good doesn't necessarily will fit. A certain mode doesn't necessarily mean it's a certain scale or arpeggio. It just means that it's a combination of things that sound good. And you you want to learn these directly from the people you like. And what I realized over the years when I start practicing all this stuff is that I realized that a lot of my favorite players use certain things again and again. And that helps you find your sense of what is a good melody, what are good licks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm a, I just released a new book, uh, which if you guys like what I'm talking about, you want to get more ideas like this, that's, a, that's one of the things you can do is check out the new book. I'll give you the link to it. And if you, I'm going to play an ex, a few examples from the book actually so you guys have an idea of what's it all about and what's in the book and things like that. So I'm just going to pop up the link here. Uh, 60 beginner jazz guitar licks ebook. So I'm going to put the link here. If you guys are watching this, please type out where you're from. I'd love to know where you're from and why you're watching this or how you find me and stuff like that. Um, let me find one of some of the links here. So I'm going to play you guys one, maybe 
D minor. No, and let me play something from C major so that it relates to what you've been hearing all this time so far. So this lick is, which lick is this? Okay, this is the first lick from here. This is probably something I got actually from Jonathan Kreisberg. Oh no, it's from Mike Moreno or Jonathan Kreisberg, I'm not sure. So I quite like that. So it does resolve to the C. So it is it's ascending. So it goes to the D here. Then targeting the A. Then targeting F. Resolving to the resolving to the E of the C. So that's quite nice. So if I, I jam that out and actually added that in. That's that's the first lay. It's quite nice. I I like this one a lot. So that's lick number one. So let me play you another another one from the the major seven one. I like this one too. So it, it's a repeating lick and goes here. This uh, goes to the G a uh, G. Then same sequence. How could I use that in, in a solo? Oh, sorry. What, what I want to do when I practice licks is I want to actually get those licks um, that sound good to me, that are interesting to me. And after I get those licks, I want to actually start using them in the jams. Because if I just like, you know, if I just play the licks by itself, they just become licks. That I want to be able to mold these things. I want to be able to use them. I want to be able to modify them so that I can actually get different ideas and I, I, I want to be able to be flexible with these ideas and the licks itself are just beginnings of the
try to use that now. I'm going to try to just use what I have. I'm going to play over a chord progression of C major 7 to A7, D minor 7, G7, and see how it goes. And sometimes like when the thing is when you practice this stuff right sometimes it doesn't work sometimes you mess up sometimes you make mistakes you know and the I think the most important thing when you talk about practicing is that it's not about getting things completely perfect it's not about getting things like flawless but it's about being brave to try things so there's a fighting chance that when you actually really improvise for during a performance or a show or something there's a fighting chance that those things will come out and to not be afraid of making mistakes. That's probably the biggest thing that uh, it takes. And at the very beginning, it's about learning those phrases. You know, for example, I was to show you my student some, some phrases that I like, like uh, let's say G7 or something. If it's altered, right, I like this one. Or I also like this diminished thing. I've been doing this a lot because I've been checking out some gypsy jazz stuff. Or from here. Or from here. Uh, something like that. Something like that, maybe. Or. I like personally I use this a lot another one I use a lot it's like super cliche that's just like super super cliche but those things sound good and a lot of jazz musicians they use those a lot and so what happens is if you um, if you keep using those kind of phrases and you practice those and get those really sounding really good uh, you eventually will develop the chops the technique uh, the sound the tone the touch the time uh, to be able to improvise and I think it's really really important to learn things that sound good and practice them as much as possible in the context of the real music so that you're not practicing things out of context some people practice modes for years and they can't play some people practice skills and arpeggios for years and cannot play jazz you know I've been guilty of that. I practice all sorts of stuff that do not immediately force things into my playing, do not get me to the next stage of my development. And sometimes keeping it super simple 
but very focused can help. You know, learning licks is definitely one of them, which is why I've been writing all these different lick books. Um, there was a point in my life when I thought, like, why would I write lick books? You know, like, why don't you just, I don't know, learn from recordings, or why would, why don't you just compose? And I realized that my experience of writing these licks down are filtered through my kind of sensibility and taste. And I think uh, for some people, if you are having problems transcribing by ear, you may need the notation to help. So if you, you know, you're coming from a classical background or maybe you're, you have difficulty learning completely by ear, uh, that's what the book is for. And it's written in treble clef. So even if you, you know, if you can read treble clef, you play piano or saxophone or trumpet or something, you can still use the book. I target it for guitarists, but a lot of the licks will be transposable and usable in, on different instruments, you know, flute for sure, violin, um, Dylan's in the house. Hey, Dylan. Yeah, Dylan can use it on cello if, as long as he reads uh, treble clef part. So, so yeah, so that's, that's kind of why I want to share. I just want to share that practicing jazz guitar leagues, um are kind of little, it's like learning language and learning how to talk and learning how to communicate. You learn phrases. You don't say to someone, uh, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, U, V, W, X, Y, Z, or Z, Y, X, W, V, A, T, S, R, Q, P, O, N, M, L, K, J, I, H, G, F, E, D, C, B, A. You don't reset the alphabet front and back, you know. You actually want to play phrases, things that you actually would use in conversation, in jam sessions. You don't want to just recite the alphabet. And tons of people just play skills for years and never have any melodies, never know any phrases. And I've been... Through that, I, I know the frustration. I practice all the skills. People told me to practice all the skills and arpeggios, and I still got stuck. And this was the missing link, which is like really practicing real music, real phrases. Um, yeah, that's my experience. So does anyone have any questions? Jared's in the house, Dylan's in the house, David Park, Danny Rush in the house. Uh, does anyone have any questions? Sesiapa ada soalan tak? Kalau ada soalan, saya boleh cuba jawab. If you guys have any questions, I'll try to answer, maybe one or two questions, and then I'm going to call it a night. I haven't done this in a while, so I do apologize for it uh, taking some time. But I've really been just contemplating and thinking about all these things. And I'm working on two, just to let you guys know, I'm working on one, two, three, four new books. I don't know which one's going to come out first, but I am working my, on my first Malay ebook, uh, which is about... Uh, developing your music career. Uh, there's also an English version of it, which is similar kind of content, um, but I guess more philosophical. It's a lot of it's very practical advice, but there's also a lot of philosophy in it. Uh, it's called the Poetic Musician Framework. Is the, that book in English? That's cool. Just listening in. Thanks, Jared. Thanks for listening in, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much for tuning in. And guess what, guys? This is episode 42, episode 42 of this show. There was a point when I did it every single night, and I'm going to try to see if I can keep that up again. Um, and if you guys are tuning in, the other thing is I just put up a new episode of my podcast as well. I don't know how many of you guys, whether any of you guys know I have a podcast. Uh, and the podcast is called um, Music from A to Z. Let me give you a link to it. It should be out on Spotify later as well, but right now it's it's already out. Uh, listen to my podcast here. So the newest episode I just released is actually um, it's actually an excerpt from a Skype guitar lesson that I gave earlier today. So I recorded the audio on my side and I edited it a bit uh, to kind of cover this main point. It's a question of making art as a newbie compared to making art as an experienced musician and the benefits of being in an early stage of composing your own music, writing your own music, and how it feels like when you've been doing it for a while or been doing it for commerce or making a living, things like that. So uh, I share those thoughts in the podcast. It's about four minutes and a half or something like that, four minutes, 40 seconds or so. So if you guys are interested in that topic, if you guys write your own music, Check that out. Uh, that could be a cool thing uh, if you write your own music and you're curious about my thoughts on it. And yeah, so I already gave the link to the book. So I'm just going to throw in one more thing. Uh, I think I, let me see if I can, I'm going to throw in a discount quote for you guys. 
So um, FB Live. Okay, I'm going to throw in a code. Wait, let me simplify. I don't want it to be too. I don't want it, the code to be too complicated to type. Three, two, four. Okay, so if you, any one of you guys want to get my new book, my new ebook, this is the code. Um, use this discount. I'll give you guys a code before I go discount code for. How much is it off? How much am I giving off there? Twenty percent off. So you get two dollars off, or um, eight ringgit off. Actually, it's the same. Two dollars, eight ringgit um, for the ebook. It's twenty percent off discount code. Use it here. You guys, a link to it. Uh, okay, so I just put in a, a discount code there. So if you guys want to learn more jazz guitar licks, including the ones that I showed you guys just now, you can actually go to the page. Uh, the link is there, and I just threw in a discount code for you guys. If you're watching this, and this this is like the only way you can find this particular discount code is FB Live, all caps, three two four. Uh, the book goes for ten US dollars or forty ringgit. If you use that discount code, uh, you will get. Two dollars off. You get about eight ringgit, two dollars off the book. So it'll be, instead of ten bucks, it'll be eight bucks. You know. So if you're interested in the jazz guitar licks and you want to learn more, get the new book, and that's the discount code in case you want to get it. Uh, since you're watching this Facebook live thing, I appreciate it a lot. So that's that's basically today's uh, episode. So thanks so much for watching the Ask Ask Show episode number forty-two. Uh, practicing jazz guitar licks and beginning improvisation. Uh, I will leave this as uh, you can watch it in the rebroadcast if you're watching it again. Um, the licks I show you are indeed in the new book, 60 Beginner Jazz Guitar Licks. You want to get more, you can get the ebook as well. Um, if you want to listen to more of my stuff, you can also check out my podcast. Uh, some interesting topic today is art as a newbie, art as an experienced musician. And if you want to get the book, there's a 20% off discount code as well. So thanks so much for watching, and uh, we'll see you guys again next time, okay? Take care, guys, and good night.